Hey everybody, Buddy Cosplay here. Welcome down to the shop. And today we're going to talk about creating better seams. Now, there's a ton of videos, I've even covered one or two, about making seams. But it's not really about making the seams, it's about covering the seams. And there are many options you can do to fill in your seams and to kind of hide the connection from one piece of foam to the other. We're just going to look at the most common today. Now in the video that follows, I don't show every single option out there. I show the top three. Oh, actually the top two. And then I do a variation of the second one to test out a different version of that to see which one turns out best. But I also wanted to mention right up front that another option that's not in the video is air dry clay. I've got this Crayola Model Magic. It's very lightweight air dry clay. And when you have a big seam, you basically take a bit of it, you roll it out to like a thin tube, and you put it down in the seam, you flatten it, you can use wet finger to kind of get it nice and smooth. And once that's dry, you can sand it a little bit. Just be careful not to mess up your foam. So if you want to try something like this, it's a great choice if you don't have access to um, the stuff we're going to use today. But this is not the cheapest. That's why I didn't really put it in the video. As far as the cheapest, that's what brings us to the, the two top options that we're going to use. And the first one is when people put things together when they're first starting out, oftentimes they don't have the budget to purchase barge rubber cement or well wood rubber cement. Um, you can buy smaller tubes, but as you start to build things, uh, you'll require a little bit more of that contact adhesive. So a lot of people that are just starting out will like to use hot glue. Hot glue is affordable, it's easy to use, and it's great for beginners. Um, it's inexpensive, I think I already said that. But the thing about it is where the top of a seam lines up, let me get some, here's some foam. If you use hot glue, a lot of times you'll have a seam that's kind of open like this. And that's because people are afraid to put hot glue along the the entire part that they're connecting because you will get you will get let me find out you will get overflow such as this it'll squeeze out and no one wants that on their finished product so they'll tend to put it down in the center and on the bottom only and when they stick it together the top is just not sealed as flush as you would like it to be there's always some little cracks not always but uh, it's just something that happens a lot with people that use um, hot glue. So we're gonna look at how hot glue performs as um, covering seams, as a way to cover seams. And we're also gonna look at how our quick seal holds up against it. This is what I use often, but by the end of this video, you'll see that I'm gonna move on to something different. So let's test it out, see what we get. All right, we're gonna do some testing. First thing we're gonna use is this DAP Quick Seal. It's what I usually use. And we're gonna try a new one, which is acrylic latex caulk. And of course, a warning to those with latex allergies, this might not be something you want to use. We're also gonna try good old fashioned hot glue. And as you can tell, I don't like it. So I've got a couple identical pieces. I'm gonna glue them all together using hot glue, just to use as a base template for this. I'm just going to put a piece together and I'm going to stick the other one on and that's how I usually do hot glue it's nothing too technical about it it's just difficult because you have to hold it in place and especially when you have a curve it makes things difficult so I'm going to give you an example of what not to do with hot glue you do not want to use too much glue and you also don't want to just squish it together because what will happen is you'll get these beads of hot glue that come out onto your surface and those are difficult to get rid of. Now sometimes you can just wipe them off while they're still hot and you can try to, well, I'll show you what to do later. I'm going to apply just enough that we need. We'll start from the top and any hot glue that we have that is an overflow will squeeze out of the bottom instead of out of the top because we're pressing it that way. Much better seam. So now we're going to see what the quick seal, the acrylic, and the hot glue can do for these seams. 
We'll start off with the hot glue. When you have a bad seam with your hot glue, you can use the hot tip of your hot glue gun to kind of smooth things out. And that's what I'm going to do here. And you're just basically remelting the hot glue and spreading it a little bit thinner. Now this will never get to a perfect seam. No matter how well you try to smooth this out, you just really can't do it. So you really have to be careful with hot glue and get a good seam the first time because then you're limited on what you can do with your seams. But since we're talking about filling seams, I have some open seams that I'm going to inject a little more hot glue into them and continue to try to smooth this out. Now, of course, this is never gonna be the way uh, you would like your finished product to look. And I'm, I'm getting a little sloppy here, of course, but I'm illustrating how difficult it can be to use hot glue as a seam filler. Now we're going to try the quick seal, which is what I usually use, and we're just going to have a little bit of water to smooth it out with later, and a popsicle stick to use as kind of a spatula. We'll put a little bit out, and we'll scoop it up, and we'll just start applying it as if you're putting drywall plaster on your wall. Just smearing it into the seam. You want to make sure that it's getting down into those cracks, and if you have any on the surface, as I do, you want to try to smooth that out as much as you can. First smooth it with your popsicle stick and then you want to follow up using a wet finger. You can really start to blend this out into the foam using a little bit of water in your finger. And when we're done with that, we'll set it to the side. Now we're going to try the acrylic latex caulk. Now, if you've ever, never used a caulking gun before, a lot of people don't realize there's a spout cutter on the handle there. So we're going to cut that off, and most of these will have a membrane that you have to puncture. This one, believe it or not, did not. To work one of these guns, you just basically use your thumb and push this down to let the plunger move freely, or you use the trigger to make the plunger go forward. So now that we've got it all set up, I should have probably put this on paper and used my popsicle stick and used less, but I got, I got carried away just because I wanted to show the limitations on what you've got with these tubes. Don't forget to click that little thumb button to release the pressure or it'll keep dripping out. Now we'll smooth it out using our popsicle stick and a wet finger to also feather this in just as we did with the other dap. Don't forget to plug the tip of your tube if you're using this because it will dry overnight. I usually put a big bolt in it and then I'll even cover it up with a little bit of duct tape just to kind of make a good seal. We're going to give this 24 hours to dry and cure and then we're going to come back and do a second layer. I'm going to do a layer for all of them and we're going to make sure everything's as smooth as we can get it with our finger. There's not much I could do with the hot glue so I'm just going to let it be. The next day everything is cured and now we're just going to begin testing on the sanding aspect of this stuff. We're going to start with the regular dap that I usually use and I know it has its limitations with sanding. That's why it's important to get it as smooth as possible with your finger. As you can see it starts to pull away from the foam as you sand it, which is one of the downsides to it. And this is why I really wanted to do this test. I heard this acrylic caulk was much better at sanding. So we're going to test it and find out. And as you can see, you can't really feather it that well either. I'm going to follow up with a finer grit sandpaper on a sanding stick. And that's the finished result. Now we'll try the acrylic latex. And we're going to start with the sanding block. And just stopping halfway through the sanding, I can already tell this sands much better than the other stuff. Now we're going to follow that up with our fine grit sanding stick. And the end result is you can see that it feathers much nicer and it is a much smoother result compared to the original dap that I've been using. 
Now, if you've ever used hot glue, we know you can't really sand it. The only thing you can really do is cause enough heat and friction with sandpaper to try to smooth it out, but there's not really much you could do with it. But since I sanded the other ones, I figured I'd give it a shot anyway. So the initial result is the acrylic latex. Looks good. Probably in second place would be the quick seal. And third place, which is just the hot glue. To show a better finish on these, I took them outside and put a single layer of primer on them and then spray painted them so we can see how they look with a little bit of reflection. And here is the hot glue, which obviously was last place. A runner up was the current DAP quick seal that I use that I will probably start using something different going forward. And the winner is the acrylic latex. It's a much nicer, smoother finish for the seam here. And to wrap up this video, I really want to point out that I did not take a lot of care putting these pieces together. I did not try my best to make sure the seam was perfect using the hot glue and that um, every bit of sanding I'd done on these was not done to the best of my ability. I did not put several layers of primer on it or anything else to make it extra smooth. I just wanted to do quick and dirty examples to see which one would do the best. Now with that said, with more work and more effort, you may be able to use hot glue better, but as you can see with the seam, it's just not worth all the extra time it takes to try to, to fix it. I just didn't like it. Um, it's one thing if you use hot glue to put something together and leave the seam as it is, than it is to try to fill the seam because then you've got all this extra hot glue on here that you're working to continually try to straighten out and you just it's very difficult to work with for that reason. Not difficult to work with as an adhesive but as a seam coverage. Make sure I specify that. The quick seal which turned out pretty good. It's what I usually use. I use it on most of the things that uh, I've built in the past. You can still see the seam. Of course the edges don't really matter because I didn't try to fill that up we're just basically focusing on the center but you can see even a little spot right here where it come off you can see it in the paint so that's why this comes in second place and so that brings us to first place the acrylic latex caulk got those tubes on Amazon for three bucks I think same price as this the only downside is um, unless you find it in a tube like this, which I did not see. You have to have a caulking gun. You have to make sure you seal it or it'll go bad. It's a little harder to work with because it's bulky versus this easy to use tube. But there may be other brands out there that have it in the tubes. But ultimately, the finished product was much nicer. It was easier to sand after everything had dried. It actually sanded without starting to come across come off at the edges or to chip off almost as the regular dap did in this area. So that's the winner. I'm going to start using this going forward because this test showed me that this would make my life a little bit easier with creating better seams, covering them up versus what I have been using. So that's why it's always good to do tests, try new things and see what you can uh, come up with that might make your cosplay builds a little bit easier. And just to re-mention the air dry clay because we mentioned this at the beginning, if you have not watched the Zoom helmet build, I'd recommend you going to do that. I recommend you to go do that. I recommend that you go do that. I'm having a bad day today. It's Monday. I'm recording this on Monday. Should know better. I recommend you going to check out the Zoom helmet build because I use this and you can see how well this can be blended in with your phone. I actually have the mask right here. Now in this mask, in case you don't want to go watch the video, you can see I wanted to see how much extra detail I can add that I can't get from just bending foam with heat. So I took some air dry clay and I made little ridges and I blended it in with my finger. And as you can see, if you look close, it's difficult to see a transition between where this is and the foam is at. 
it blended very well. So you can use that to do your seams, which I don't remember if I did that with these. I may have just used the DAP for these seams, but have to go back and rewatch that video. But these seams are done pretty decent at the top here. And the blending is done really well. And that's thanks to this. So there's some options for you. Again, we've got hot glue. I don't recommend it. Second place, we've got this. First place was the acrylic latex caulk. And the honorable mention was Model Magic Air Dry Clay. So those are my recommendations for making better seams for your cosplay. If you have any other input, you have other suggestions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them down in the description down below. And of course, all the stuff that I've mentioned will be linked down in the description as well. Click that subscribe button. Love your faces. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.